Hi, I'm Marlo from Wild Food UK. It's the 16th of April today, and uh, at the moment I'm in Herefordshire. I am going to cross a county border today, but being as it's the 16th of April, we are smack bang this year in the middle of morel season. And it seems to be so far that this is one of the best years for morels that I've ever known. Uh, so today I'm going to try and do a video and introduce you to at least four types. Um, I'm going to go to four different sites and fingers crossed we might even get a fit. But the first one is just down here. So come on forward, David, and have a look at this. Quite hard to spot in amongst this gravel here. And gravel is certainly not one of the habitats that you would read about in the books. Now, with the Morcella genus, with all these morels, uh, you hear about them growing with dead elm trees. Obviously, we don't have too many dead elm trees now in the UK. You hear about them occasionally growing with ash or in burnt fire pits in orchards. It's all uh, tall tales, really, as far as I'm concerned, because when I find morels, I just find them in random places by being outside and walking around. It really is as simple as that. If you want to find morels, go out for big walks in different environments in April. Now, this one here is our common morel, Morcella vulgaris, or I believe current BMS taxonomy says that this one is just called the morel. Now, look at that structure there. It's fantastic, very honeycomb-like loads of grooves and crevices. Now if I pull away the gravel around it, you'll see it's got a nice white stem. Now that stem would normally be quite nice and straight and hollow, but these fellas here are growing through a weed mat, would you believe? They're almost doing a Terminator 2 where they're starting with, below the weed mat, growing through it and then recongealing, I suppose just on the other side. So I'll show you that. The base of this would normally be nice and hollow, but unfortunately these ones, like I say, they've got a weird weed mat to grow through first. So the base is not as hollow as it normally is. But the rest of the mushroom will allow me to show you the key identifier for the more cellars if my knife is sharp enough. And that there's one dangerous lookalike for the Morcellas, the, the false morel. Now, if I cut that in half, you'll see what we've got is hmm, almost an entirely hollow structure. And a slug eating my morels, how dare he. And that's what you get with the morels. They are one structure where the mushroom and the cap are attached to each other with a completely hollow center. If this was the false morel, the gyromitra esculenta, which uh, when raw is a potentially even a deadly mushroom, I believe. I know some people eat it when it's been well cooked because you can cook out the gyromitrin, which is the uh, toxin in there. Um, but even morels, this morel here, the true morel, uh, you do have to cook them well before you eat them. Uh, if you were to eat one of these raw, it would uh, do you no favors whatsoever. Um, but the common morel, if I turn it over, if you have a look at that pocketed structure on the outside, you can see it's not very uniform at all. That's one of the key differences between this and one of the other morels that I'm going to show you, hopefully, in just a few minutes. Anyway, good start to the day. I like morel season. Let's go and find some more. <laughs> videos you'll see how amazing it is for fungus and you all know we keep our mushroom spots to ourselves especially when you find morels we've got our second type of morel for today it's only five past ten so that's a good start just down here 
we have a, a mushroom which isn't in the Morcella genus. It's uh, the Verpa conica, but it's known as the early morel or the thimble morel. So early morel because it comes up normally just a bit before the others and the thimble morel for a reason that I'm going to show you in just a second. But we've got it in all stages of growth here. So the first thing you see is uh, a little brown nubbin sticking out the ground like that, much smoother than the common morel that I was just showing you. Um, and then that will grow with this stem, which gets up to about 10 to 12 centimetres. Again, as you can see on all of these, the cat is not anywhere near as honeycomb-like as it is on the other morels. Now, there are other types of verpa. There's the verpa bohemica, but I don't think that one's found in the UK. So I think this is our only native type of verpa. And again, it will have a completely hollow stem like the other morel that I showed you. But in fact, I'll just try and do it like this. But the difference is that if I break the cap, you'll see the cap is only attached at the very top of the stem and it hangs down like a thimble, hence the name, the thimble morel. Now, culinarily, uh, the Burpa bohemica is a, a prized mushroom in Europe. Um, this one uh, is one that I've not eaten too often, but I find it a little bit more plain in taste than the um, other morels that I'm hopefully gonna show you today and the common morel that I showed you just a, a minute ago. But still, this is an absolutely lovely find. Um, again, environment wise, I've heard that this mushroom likes to grow with ash trees, but there is not an ash tree in sight around here. So, like I said about the common morel, if you want to find your morels, ignore all the environments uh, that you read in the books. Just get outside and go walking with your eyes peeled. Just remember, if you're looking at the ground all the time, sometimes you do bump into the occasional branch. That's a, a common forager's injury. Anyway, our second morel of the day, the lovely little Verpa conica, or thimble morel, or early morel. And even if I was just finding these today, I'd still be a happy forager. But hopefully we're gonna to go to another spot now and show you our third type of morel for one day. Fingers crossed. Oh, just one last little thing, actually. Zoom in down here. We've got this slightly darker color one. As they get older, if they haven't been slug eaten, like this one here, you'll see the cap darkens up from that brown. All still perfectly edible and all going in my morel foragers basket today. Happy days. Right, it's now 5 to 11 and we're at our third morel spot of the day already. And unlike the others, this is one where I can tell you the environment to look in because uh, this one is known as the wood chip morel. And in the UK, that's where you find it, in amongst dump, dumped wood chips. Uh, quite often in places like the Morrison's car park or uh, anywhere there's been wood chip placed on estate flower beds because that's the substrate that this mushroom down here grows out of. You can see there's plenty of wood chip here behind me, but this was apparently spread around this area last year. And you can see quite a few examples of our Morcella importuna. And uh, as with the, the common morel that I showed you first of all, it's got an entirely hollow structure. But unlike the common morel that I showed you, it has a much more uniform honeycomb structure on the outside of the cap. So I can show you that now. It has, on this older one, it's made it more clear, but it has sort of laddering. So lots of vertical ridges with little struts across. You all know what a ladder looks like. So this is our Morcella 
importuna or the wood chip morel and uh, i've got to say this is uh, probably my favorite to eat in the family so happy days we've found a few more this one's a little bit past its best but you could still cook this one quite easily there's a little bit of insect life crawling around on top there but that just adds a bit of protein um, this one here looks like it's going to grow into a nice big specimen this one here's past its best and won't be coming home with us but you don't always get that perfect ladder structure sometimes just like with all mushrooms if their growth is a little bit hindered by either some slug damage or you know growing underneath a, a twig or something like that you can get some funky shapes and there you go totally hollow can i see you through there i can just about see you through this lovely deformed uh, Morcella importuna, the wood chip morel. This one over here is about as big as they get. You can see he's been munched on one side too. And that is uh, not, a, not a problem as far as I'm concerned. The slugs have had their little bit. I'm getting the rest. And here's a lovely little baby. Just to show you what they look like when they first come up. Oh, and even younger. Back off a little bit, David, and follow my finger. Look at this little beauty. So, five to 11, and we've already found three different types of morel. Now we're gonna go and cross into Gloucestershire and hopefully find our fourth. Fingers crossed on that one, but yeah, the day's just getting better so far. have come across the border from Herefordshire into Gloucestershire and it's about two o'clock now and we've got our fourth morels of the day and you might be um, able to judge by my smile how happy I am. Come on down here David let's show, show the people what we've been collecting. Here we go our fourth different type of morel for today. These are the Morcella Esculenta. Uh, I think um, the uh, the common name for these is a yellow morel, but Attila keeps telling me that's an American common name, and over here we just call them the morel. Uh, they have the same characteristics, really, as the vulgaris, the first one that I showed you. So, in no way uniform pocketing of the cap, totally hollow cut this one just to show you with no pocketing on the inside as you can see there which rules out the gyromitra esculenta the false morel which i uh, was hoping to uh, show you a real one of in this uh, video but we haven't found any today that would have been our fifth morel of the day uh, I'm going to drop in some videos or some photos of it rather right now. So what you're looking at there is a Gyromitra esculenta. You can see that the um, the cap is much more lobed and brain-like than uh, the more honeycomb type caps that we've got of our proper true morels. And uh, also if you cut that Gyromitra in half, you'll find that it's pocketed on the inside rather than completely hollow. Now back to our beautiful morels. Here we are. Come and have a look at these. The uh, yellow morel or the Morcella esculenta is the biggest of the group as you can see here. That one's got a bit of weather damage on the top but that certainly isn't going to uh, put me off. I'll just cut that little bit off and still eat this one. Culinarily uh, this is one of the most highly regarded they're all known for doing sort of uh, morel sauces with uh, chicken and different meats. But as a vegetarian, obviously I'm not going to put them with meat. I'll uh, probably 
just fry these up with some butter because they're so tasty. They've got an almost bacon-esque flavour to them, which as a vegetarian, I miss the taste of bacon a little bit. So I'm going to just fry these up. I might try stuffing a few uh, with a sort of uh, cheesy mushroomy sauce and see how they cook with that. But really, for me, I'm, I'm just really happy at the moment, to be honest. I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, go out in April and early May and find some for yourselves and you'll be just as happy as me. Lastly, this one has actually grown around some ash trees. This is one that's known normally, again, to grow around dead elm trees, but I've heard of it growing with ash and there are ash trees behind me now. So uh, that's a, a good place to start your walks, but really just go around every green space you can find with your eyes peeled and hopefully some of you guys will find some of these for yourselves really hope you've enjoyed the video if you want to find out more go to www.wildfooduk.com So here we are at the end of the day for today and uh, just wanted to recap what I've uh, gone through for you all together, all at once. So come on down here, David, let's have a close look. First of all, we started off with our common morel, Morcella vulgaris. That's this one here. Like I described, no uniformity to the pocketing on the cap. And like all of them, completely hollow. And that's that one there. Then I showed you the Verpa conica, the thimble morel, attached very differently because it's a different genus of mushrooms, but known as the thimble or the early morel. Lovely little find there. Then we showed you our uh, Morcella importuna, the wood chip morel. And I think that one's probably our best example with the uniform kind of, let's have a look at that, laddering effect to the pocketing and then lastly we just found in amongst our cowslip i suppose this one's the nicest our morcella esculenta and a nice basket full of them slightly past their best this one i think is about as perfect as they come though so there you are, April the 16th, the day of the morels. <laughs> I'll do another video soon, come back and uh, have a look at that one. But for now, wildfooduk.com signing off.